Okay, I thought I would do this one in a different way and kind of break the third wall rather than to do a correct presentation on this. It's kind of a concept. It all hit me at once. It's one of those things when you get a thousand thoughts that come in at once, and a lot of which we've been talking about recently. For what I was trying to do while I was looking through pictures here was find a version of Homo erectus that had lived on much longer than people gave credit for in the timeline. And I know I've seen this picture before, but I couldn't quite find it. And putting in keywords and everything, I found quite a few pictures. In fact, ran myself down a rabbit hole and found two other videos worth of things to talk about. But yet couldn't find the picture of the guy that I'm trying to find for it. It's not really the key of this, and eventually I'll get there. But in that process, I was looking through pictures, and sometimes I'll have my tablet going on over here and having videos go on. It's I can look over at if they say something neat or want to show something. But also I listen to it like radio somewhat. Sometimes it's worthless. Other times, because of what I'm looking through and what I'm hearing, it ends up sparking a whole third thing that would have never happened, and it helps me. And it helps make connections. Somehow there's this little spark that goes off. And if I could pause it quick enough and get them to shut up. So I could think through the thought. Sometimes a concept and connections are made that uh, wouldn't really have been there before. And it almost seems like, you know, it because you're watching this and you're hearing that. It gives you a total different look on things. So what I was doing was trying to find this guy, but what I was listening to was a <clears throat> presentation that this guy had done. <clears throat> and it was really basically kind of bland. And not that interesting, but it sparked something with another picture that I saw, not the guy that I was looking for, and so I have another video lined up on it. But then the video from there changed and I didn't stop it and it went on and it ended up being one of those Gaia presentations, right? Y'all might have seen those. And they make some connections in those videos and I use them sometimes for inspiration in that manner but then they always come out in left field with it and space aliens and all kinds of crap and you can always tell it's about to go somewhere whenever that guy with the gray hair that talks like a televangelist somehow comes on and he really wants you to believe in this thing. It uh, always strikes me. But I'm going through trying to find these pictures and so on and they're at this point still making real good sense on the guy video and then all of a sudden they say something about Atlantis and they make a reference to Gobekli Tepe and so on and I'm all over it all ears but I'm going through pictures here and stuff and then the question was made of course about Gobekli Tepe and connections there was there ever a time that there was an advanced people that were on the planet in front of everybody else to the point that later there would be a mythology about them that would be so strong as to bring about something as the Atlantis myth. Was it 10,000 years ago or farther and then they get into the idea of the end of the last ice age and go back to Tepe again showing this concept of this having gone on and that seems to fit the timeline and everybody loves how it fits that timeline so well with it. When I was a kid you know there was a show that came on I believe this was one of the ones that had Leonard Nimoy on it and In Search Of and so on. Somebody made the comment but didn't want to make it the focus of the show because didn't want to take the, the power out of the show to come around and tell you that uh, if you just took one zero off the number that they give 
that would correspond real closely to the time that Crete and Santorini had all exploded and that the Minoans we know there were a very advanced people much long before a European people that we find now they started that all off in there and that they had originally come from somewhere over that direction so that could be an Atlantean type people they were seafaring people they didn't have any walls of defense that others had already started even created it was like they were in defiance and didn't really need it the only people that they had real good contact with the Phoenicians and stuff and I guess they really knew not to mess with them but we've found plumbing and all kinds of thing with them and all their depictions of Taurus and things that go along with this and then the, you know the ancient bull and minotaur stories and things that went from that and the mythologies that come from that concept that went out of it and we've got another videos but that's not where I was really going with this you know, what's being shown here is maybe one person's viewpoint on their reality of how they came to be their current version of humanity. But it really wouldn't be all of humanities. What we're looking at here is something that, uh, well, it's out of line and everything exactly so, so finger of God here we have an earliest form of the hominid that's not even a homo so we're not really correctly in even a humid and so on yet well I'd like to make the mention real quick that oh by the way they're trying to change the definition of human now apparently because you see if they think that they find anybody that really is attached to modern humans now even though it's a hominid they're starting to refer to them as the first humans and all this type of stuff and it's like well hold on a minute the definition of human doesn't wait but the, you'll find that they'll have to do that here and so it's it's another buttering up of concepts for people but here's this ape thing that's before Lucy really and then you have well, that's Lucy over there. So we're looking at stuff that spans back and through at least 2.1 million years ago. You'll find something right here that's like Australopithecus blocki or whatever, or a variation of its drawing. You can see how from the eyes to the top of the head, there's not really much there going on much like the chimp that's over here and so on but there's big eyebrows on that and so on but they conspicuously aren't really showing up on there because of all the other crap on its face it's just kind of trapped in it but it should have that more <clears throat> find hominid variations like this in the top left hand side like a homo or gaster a form of Homo erectus here that was found that actually was found past the point that <clears throat> they're really supposed to be around but in Africa at about 140,000 BC <clears throat> then you find something that's a depiction like uh, Iwiliru which looks a lot like modern human but it is closely related to the last one we talked about in fact if you look back and forth between them you'll find a very close relationship a lack of any body or facial hair on this one no eyebrows really almost to speak of and so on and you can see how when they do these drawings they try to gear it a certain way but this is the way one humanity would come across and from that point that we're looking at here they were impinged upon <clears throat> by a modern human somewhat like this but this was a guy that put himself in here who had already been impinged upon a little bit by Neanderthals giving him just a couple of percent and we I've always said that they never really got any but they have gotten a small percentage because of admix which they have about a 22 percent admix in them 
of a Caucasoid type person. It's not a mongoloid or this or that or an Eskimo. Let's be straightforward about that. So, but the real picture that I wanted to have up here would perhaps be the surrounding of not this guy that's here. Although if you took off his glasses and you let his facial hair and hair grow for about six months or so, then you might get one to look very much similar, especially if he got out and started working in the yard every day and things like that and got him a good burnished tan going on, right? Would start to look like Cro-Magnon and then all you'd have to do is throw him a few accoutrements that we have associate with him and it would look very much like a lot of the depictions we give of Cro-Magnon. I have no idea why they always are quite frequently during a period of our time tried to depict Neanderthal as some type of orange person. That's orange. It's not even the red of a fake red Indian concept or somebody that's been rubbed with red ochre. It's just orange. I mean, D Donald Trump would be envious, but in reality, it would have just looked basically like somebody who had a real good tan. And so there would be a redness that's still left into it, but that's not the way they would look. At least they gave him the bushy blonde hairdo and the light or green eyes it looks like here in the depiction. And we have blue eyes and the guy that's there with the glasses poking in that's setting in for Cro-Magnon, man. And you think, well, that's not really, you know, applicable. But it is Cro-Magnon, man, even at, well, projected for 50,000 years or more. And they could find something that's 70,000 and then go, oh, ho. But Cro-Magnon man goes back at least 30,000 years and his genetics are still here today. It's still the same people. So it all ruins that out of Africa and the real concept that's there. But that's not what this video is about. This was about hearing because I'm looking at this. And through these pictures of all these different ancient hominids. And all of a sudden hearing him talk about Atlantis. But then, and of course that sparks me and, and my ear perks up. But then they, and go back to Tepe and then, ah, oh, my ear hears it again and stuff. And what are these people going to say next, right? And strangely, they just asked the question if there were people that were highly advanced compared to the other people. And so instantly, I think one thought and then a thousand pictures come in my mind of all types of research that I've done through that. But then also a lot of videos that we've been doing recently and showing to you about this same topic of ancient hominids and people that have come along. And it got me to thinking that the inspiration for the Greeks to have said that was probably threefold. They had gotten to a point where they were reaching the point that they previously had given their gods something we can associate in a modern time and past that way we've gotten past what we would have called a god just a few thousand years ago. For certain. And that the Greeks at that time had gotten past the point of the Olympian gods and the bullshit that they had made up that they could have even possibly had and things that they made up magic about they couldn't understand. And just like modern white people here making up stories about Buck Rogers and ray guns and people flying and all kinds of silly shit and the next thing you know we've got ray guns and we've got people flying through space and everything and it almost seems like in some form or another, whatever we dream, we can make happen in one form or another. We're starting to reach past the point of even the dreams of hundreds of years ago. Movies have to get redone over and over constantly. 
they can't find a new edge because we're on the edge of all these expectations, almost sitting in that same predicament that the Greeks found themselves in, but almost in the same predicament they are claiming that the Atlanteans were in at one time. To where there was this more advanced people on the planet at about 10,500 BC or so, give or take, and around that time, a great catastrophe happened, and it knocked them back to the point that things had to start all over again. And of course, this was at a time that people were still giving the gods and Zeus all their hubris and everything, and even Neptune, who I'm named after, or I named myself after, because of connections with oceans and everything that it goes with. But... They blamed it on the fact that they had gotten a little too cocky. But then said, well, they get too cocky, but what happened? Well, the gods apparently, because something big happened, and boom. And when we look back now, we find that to be the Younger Dryas event that we've talked about far too many times. And now that's been double, triple, quadruple verified. In fact, the people that came in to bullshit it have double verified it. And it involved all of North America and at least the top half of it but then of course all of it really and involved all of Europe through Abu Herrera not just on the North Continental Ice Shelf in fact that in between one we found in Hiawatha Crater that they found now of Iceland is just one of a string that run across our planet just like a string ran across Jupiter whenever Comet Shoemaker Levy hit it in so many times and each hit would have taken all of humanity out in fact here's one for you if all of those if that wouldn't have broken into about six pieces or so whatever and hit us in a multiple hit like a shotgun and over 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 and it did it all at one time probably would have done a dinosaur effect and took us all out and we wouldn't be able to talk about it now we wouldn't be here there'd be some small life bullshit and it would take millions of years to go back up and so on maybe next time it'd be a web-footed duck boy but that didn't happen but there were a people that were advanced enough at least at that time happening there compared to all of other humanity, that they were building things, and it's not just the fact that it looks like some kind of Stonehenge, or that it has astronomical connections that people have already figured out, or they even made it out of sacred geometry that they have, or that they were able to cut and make boss reliefs that lasted through as impeccable as they look today. It's all of those things and more. For at this time, I don't know if you're aware, but still on this planet, there are people who are derived from Homo erectus types that are still primitives on this planet. There are Homo sapien blends. There are Homo sapien blends on this planet that are in South American rainforest. There are Eskimos still living as primitive as they were before the Indians came, but oh, much more advanced now once they've had contact. But there are Inuits that still live in the ancient ways. But was there a time of Atlantis? Was there a time whenever there was all of this in a bag of chips? Oh, well, I, I felt long ago that the Greeks had surpassed their expectations on what they could tell you even how cool Atlantis was. If they were to set something up in front of them at the point they were telling the story, it's all the grandeur of Atlantis. Like somebody telling you the grandeur of heaven.
and that they at that time were surpassing it anyhow and it was a threat towards their own selves of like you know let's not fuck up because there were these people that long ago used to have it going on real good and it took them till now to get the crap back together to that point and surpass it and now we are like the things that they used to talk about the gods had and we've made it all every bit of it right here in front of us the columns the polish so much you can see your face in and stuff that seemed like some kind of magic bullshit here it is right in front of you these people that look like medusa trap them in a moment and they're just stuck in statues and poses that are so real that we still marvel at them to this day how could they take a chunk of rock and just chip this person out of it like he was frozen in ice and they just took the ice away While they were saying it, they were a people that were more advanced than any people on the planet. And he was broadcasting it in a different light. But also giving that threat. Perhaps he was given that threat. Perhaps it's all so true. And he was given that threat by the priest and says because they saw him coming on strong and they go man we had shit coming on strong too and uh hey we're 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 a shadow of what we used to be and they're like yeah i've come to talk to you because of that one can only beg to imagine the conversations that went on that led up to the writing of atlantis as opposed to the writing of it itself. Some people say it was just a contest, like they did when they wrote Frankenstein and Dracula, and got together and, ooh, and on a dark and stormy night, let's write some scary ghost stories, and some people came up with some badass stuff. This some kind of blend but this homo erectus type lived on until the la end of the last ice age in fact on and past just a little bit and this Iwo Iliro we see down bottom middle here pretty much that really just looks just like this homo erectus from 160,000 years ago we did a video about with a registered archaeologist telling you about it all of a sudden changed about 4400 BC and got impinged by this guy up here or not this one and don't start getting that in your mind but somebody that looked like this guy kinda impinged on this guy and got in the, in the modern form that we see today same kind of thing happened but earlier in China same thing happened in between and in India and there are forms of eats that we we can see and the remnants of eats that we can still see today it's not too hard to peer through the glass whenever you blow away the fog that I keep talking about that we keep to be trying to put ourselves under like we're stupid and don't realize the reality of things is there a time whenever these people were better more advanced anything yeah it goes back at least a hundred thousand years it goes back three hundred and fifteen thousand years when they pop up like popcorn they have a toolkit that's at least as advanced as everybody else's and a brain that's a little bit bigger both these forms of these lighter people up here actually are derived from a different thing that's really not even in this picture there are homo erectus forms which they are showing here which might have led to a portion of what is black people as we know it today but they have other hominids which may be on the page or maybe not 
that lead up to at least 19% of their hominid and a MUC7 gene in their saliva whenever they do the simple swab test showed up as an unknown ghost hominid that no other people on the planet have. So this whole linear concept was way blown out of the water before that was even found, but then to find that out, it's, it's like, well, no, it's even just, it's not even the same. And of course, out of Africa doesn't involve everybody, especially the ones that never made it out of Africa. And out of Africa never meant from these people who show up extremely late in the whole scheme of things. But out of Africa, simultaneously to this point, with Homo erectus, we have forms that are out of Africa that look totally different. We've shown it in a couple of videos. Let's, let's, let's pull back out of this here real quick and show you just a few of the forms that they show of things that led to modern humans, like this. Australopithecus. It's a chimpanzee and they gave it humanistic eyes with a little bit more life in them. Here's Flora Zensis. But doesn't that look familiar? They show you all these different forms of people that look like this or this and that's just goofy. Some of this stuff you can tell they took Photoshop and they said morph me this and that together. Or Lucy. It's gone back and forth in the human timeline as whether it's even there or not. I've looked up a bunch looking this. I'll get back to where I was. Oh, I thought it didn't have... So when we look at Cro-Magnon Man, you'll see a bunch of different ones, and I guess, let's just start here, the one that I showed in the last time, radically different than anything that we were seeing on that page, except for maybe the kid up top, and that Neanderthal was not fitting in that page. We're going to take, okay, mentally now, I want you to take the kid out of that picture that we just saw, see if you can do that now. Alright, now we've got the Neanderthal. Now I want to say with you now that famous kids rhyme, one of these things is not like the other. Can you tell me just which one? Yeah, it's the Neanderthal. Well, here's a Cro-Magnon view, and they show him here with bumps on his face and a knot on his head because he had apparently had a knot or a tumor or a cyst that had happened on his head. But I'll be damned if that isn't Robin Williams from Jumanji. And you'll see all these different forms of it. Here's one with steely gray blue eyes. It looks like Chris Christopherson. There's another form that's here. More of a squished face. Always when I see this, I think you just squished the face or something, didn't you? You could stretch that face out just a little bit and it would look more apropos. Got a big old forehead on him though because his face is squished. Hmm. Pro Cro Magnon continuity. What are they talking about? Well, look at all these depictions of Cro Magnon man. That looks so familiar. So when you see something like this, and a person that was at this level, and this is modern humans. This is at Lost Co. Cave, and they took the genetics of them in 30,000 years. It's still extant today. Still here today. So it's the people that were here today versus the fact that we had no black people yet. They don't happen until 4400 B.C. and then after an event. If you take them any time before then, they're actually a Homo erectus type species. So we're not going to try to feign ignorance on the situation here, are we? I hope not. There's no Chinese people till around 16,000 BC, and that seems to be a farce in some way or not, too. And there's a blend going on there from a species that I showed a video about and 
Red Deer Cave Man that shows you that and Peking Man and a few aberrations that are something that's not found in Africa at all. It's something that all had lighter skin that are all out of Africa. Don't have to do with except for Oriental people. Denisovans is another thing that is totally separate and different. We recently did two videos on the form from Israel and the form from the Orient or Asia as you would think of it or Eastern Asia showing a dragon man and a different variation on a Neanderthal type person that was around that we never knew that other people are saying maybe that's just Denisova they're trying to get genetic tests on it now odd that they both came out at once it's, it's kind of like we got what yeah hold on a minute people are starting to go through a lot of these old cranials that they find around and what they're finding and I've shown you in a recent video or three is that there are people that had cranial forms like this going on real recently while there are people going on that had cranial forms like this real recently and so if you want to make up an idea of the time of Atlantis and so on you can get a bunch of different slices in time and try to pick it out but it looks like from any time on the Cro-Magnon timeline until modern day even through to this day we could say there was a more advanced people on the planet now they're spacemen taught everybody how to fly we do realize how it all goes. I don't have to start going into a barking event of explaining who invented everything and things like that. But was there an Atlantis time where somebody in a timeline oh, up 10,000 years later or thousands of years later could look back and say there were a people that were more advanced it looks like there could be just about everybody on the planet saying that about these people if they ever ran into them and when they ran into them because they did Cro-Magnon's the first man with a chin and supposedly if anybody has a chin they have had interaction with a Cro-Magnoid type of man Strange thoughts go along with this on how modern man came about out of the nothing that was. But also in that same breath, we realized Cro-Magnon man had gotten to a point and then been slapped back also. And perhaps they kept this ancient tale when they were slapped back all the way to the point that they built the pyramids and the Greeks ended up building their great structures to the point that they were surpassing what they made up for even their gods because they had kept it for so long mentally as they grew it grew itself in its grandeur If they had it going on like Gobekli Tepe and kick-ass things, astronomy and everything, then got slapped back and it took five, six thousand years to recoup to that point and you had been saying on it, would you stop telling the tale at that point or would it catch in and keep going and your grandeur that you give to heaven or your special places of the gods, would it not evolve along with it? Just like whenever Sitchin told tales of the Anunnaki and they only had stuff when, uh, that was available 
a modern man right there in front of him. He couldn't put anything sci-fi enough past it except for something that was just like, they got this crap like that in Star Trek. He just couldn't make an attachment. But this form that you see whenever we're talking about like that of these ancient gods that the Sumerians had and they had all this stuff well then they learned from the gods they learned all these things whenever they came up with it they never gave credit to the gods or to themselves they always gave credit to the gods <clears throat> A very humble thing to do to never come out and say we came up with it because it was slow derived and came into position but as they did they surpassed what just 20 30 generations before had maybe thought in their wildest dreams that their gods would have one day in heaven, there'll be everything. It'll be so special. They'll have fences for all their cows and stuff like that. They'll have it to where whenever it floods out, that it floods everything. And everybody will grow crops and it'll be going great. They'll have boats going up and down the river. Everybody will be happy. And then grandma dies. Well, lo and behold, just like Buck Rogers comes true, it came true a long time ago for some people. Was there an Atlantis type time? Well, if there was an Atlantis type time where these people were all boom, you know, in that bag of chips, yeah, there's, we can find that in a lot of slices. Was there ones whenever their hubris was too much and the gods slapped them down? There were some times when maybe their hubris got them to the point that it screwed them over, but did it ever involve gods or was God throwing that snowball from hell? which is actually heaven knock on wood the heavens and sling it off in there and is there somebody is there somebody in a spacecraft that if he doesn't like what's going on here every once in a while they just go out there and push an asteroid out and get it going in the right circumference get it all lined up computer hits some degrees ding, 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 push Is that what happens? Does something like that automatically happen and we're sitting here with our thumb up our ass fixing to have it happen again and we're at the point that we could have stopped it but we didn't because our hubris is too much? Are we going to look back at this thousands of years later and say our hubris was too much? That the gods got mad all about it or something? If all of a sudden we go into another ice age real quick instead of it going the way that they're talking about or are they going to finally shut up or are they going to turn it around on us and go see I'll find that picture I was looking for it's it's not too far away but that concept of uh whether there was an Atlantean time where one was more advanced than the other can go back well where little people were living in little huts like this I've shown you pictures of and mammoth things like that they had a lot more going on than a lot of the people around them oh there were people later that called them barbarians when they got their comeuppance and the way things went and stuff but uh, in the reality when we look at that through history we wouldn't even call them that today comparative wise when we find out what the word really meant and the fact that they wouldn't shave and that's something that goes back hundreds of thousands of years perhaps when people shaving with obsidian and so on and that that was more civilized when people were doing that and if you didn't do that you were ugh apparently yeah a hey, Cro-Magnon man there's a funny picture of this guy this is Cro-Magnon man or Neanderthal, I'm sorry, to show you the difference of it. 
And they take this guy and they give him a haircut. Clean him up a little bit. Put a hat on him in a suit. He's an Irishman. Da -da 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 no, what the hell? Yeah, instead of having that older depictions, some of these modern ones, which still fit well within everything that they would have before, but now are drawn in a more modern way, and not so. We were pro. We were Fred Flintstone. Are revealing the truth of it and how you really may not be able to tell the difference but in that first picture there we could definitely tell the difference of two people that stuck out of that that don't seem like they fit in the timeline of the others and it's because at the point that they came out of Africa there were already things going on outside of Africa that led to Neanderthals for how did they just pop up like popcorn and even the form of Homo erectus that is shown all outside of Africa shows variations on a theme, none of which are like the ones that are in Africa and contained on into a modern day. It's almost like they should break that up into a regional idea like they do a lot of them by the names that they give to these things. But instead, in a trying to form a togetherness point, they put all these things together that really, whenever they take pictures together, you... And, point them out to us, you look at different forms of Homo erectus, it's quite, quite different than each other. Let's take a look at a couple. In comparison to what we've just seen, in comparison to what we were seeing at first. This will show some of Homo erectus's, but then some of its other forms that have been renamed and so on. So, we can see something like this and we can obviously tell which people are derived from this and there's not been much change from that the other people on the planet wouldn't have had that but very much a change you can see it here too the variation there they're trying to show that looks somewhat in between there's Don Cheadle so there's this form though, Hamo erectus, and if they just took away his hairy Greek eyebrows off of him, that looks very similar to some people that we see today, and that's Homo erectus. So the radical variation on Homo erectus that can be found from the different forms that they show you, like here's a drawn idea, here's the way it look, kind of can show you there's a radical difference between the, the Don Cheadle type, which they do try to give straight hair to, but they give him this concept here. Other ones they draw like this, which almost looks like a depiction of the wolf man, for Christ's sake. Do -do -ch. Or wait, does that have another video behind it? They show pictures like this. So we can easily see who comes from these forms. There's that Petri form where the guys make, made reforms of it. But we can see people that come from the forms like this. And then you can see Homo erectus outside, which does not look like this Turkana boy. And look a little more like, ah, there's that picture. No, it's not. Here's somebody that's a Homo erectus form coming out of it. Still has some brow ridge on him, heavy, but ooh, hmm. What radical different forms they have of these that show you that that's not even the same thing whatsoever. Way back when. As different as or more than any dog to wolf comparison you can give somebody are forms like this and forms like we were looking at at first. So point being in this that even Homo erectus, our earliest ancestor we can truly confirm that goes down that little run turning into a monkey as they walk slowly at walk upright 
with a lot of the people in the middle missing and all the missing link type situation were radically different than each other and were themselves hybrids of other things that we apparently are unaware of. But to take a step from something that looked like the first to turn it into something that looked like the second has to be strong inflections which look like this more than anything that we saw in the first picture short of Chad up there and the Neanderthal guy that's orange. Right? So radical different forms and we've seen a lot of these files and you can tell that Peking Man here has some type of look that has a little oriental to him but if you took that guy he probably is a hybrid of something that's already over there and if he hybrided into that thing that's over there that turns into modern day orientals which is a remnant and some type of overactive form that's still over there here's Tonta Velman got to do a video about him because look how he looks at the age that he's about I'll do a video about that Java man whoop it's a woman sorry so the diversity among humans is not really allowing for the fact that these all could be called humans might as well break it down into forms that are different than each other and explain it but in a modern day they're all converging at a certain point with each other because of one of these guys breeding with all of them yeah So anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Let me know what you think about it, but what is the timeline of the Atlantean thing? Would you say it has a sweep from 100,000 years to now? Would you say definitely at the last ice age? Would you say 9,000 years would be a key point? Would you say it's not a key point, it actually goes on for 100,000 years? What would you say? that it's dying in a recent modern age but up until very very recently it was quite a bit different than each other is that really Atlantean though that's another question for they weren't supposed to have been advanced as far as humanity goes to the Greeks they were like the Greeks weren't they in fact the Greeks had surpassed them Perhaps they didn't even realize it. But here's a Homo erectus picture of one of the others too. And that looks more like Neanderthal. And then we get a variation on that. That's nowhere near the first picture we were looking at. It gets confusing. Unless it's separate from long before and this one didn't show up till way after so it really doesn't come into play and then there's only two into play one's the derivative of the other and that happened a more recent time too so the original holotype would be more a what peace